Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Hampton, host of the Protecting Your Nest podcast, here with lead clinical psychologist, Dr. Victoria Smolder with Advocate Aurora Healthcare in Chicago. And she is here to talk about a major form of trauma that may have been under your radar. When you think about why people suffer from trauma, you think about accidents, you think about child abuse, facing combat in the military. But Dr. Smolder uh, feels we need to create awareness around another reason people suffer from trauma. So Dr. Smolder, you know, won't you enlighten my followers about the sources of trauma that most of us are simply not aware of? Of course. So, you know, there are those big single T event traumas or those big T traumas, like you mentioned, medical um, traumas, car accidents, uh, single event, um, violent crimes and, and those things or combat trauma that are more conversationally linked or more of our idea when we think about trauma symptoms. And there's also a lot of different um, ways or experiences that can uh, result in a trauma response. So it's not just those big T traumas. And there are less, less common or big T traumas that people have less awareness of, including human trafficking, for example. So a lot of times when we think about human trafficking, it feels very far removed. From our day to day, we may think only of sex trafficking, um, for example, but human trafficking covers a wide variety of things. So anytime that somebody is forced or coerced to do something that is against their will, where they are indebted to, for example, another person. So there's labor trafficking, sex trafficking, work trafficking. There's a lot of those different pieces that go into it. And it's actually a really large public health concern across our whole country. So when we think about it or see it in movies, even like Taken, for example, um, that's not necessarily always how it looks. So individuals who are in situations where they don't control their own finances, where somebody else holds their identification or in some other way makes it impossible for them to leave a situation that is not working for them, it's not good for them, or if you're moving people across state lines, um, again, for those different purposes, those are all things that encompass human trafficking. So it may look like somebody who is a migrant worker who is paid under living wage, or even in hospitality, somebody who's paid under living wage and you know, is being told that I helped you get into this country, into this position, into this area geographically. So you owe me X, Y, Z, and you have to work for me in this way, in this manner. And then that's a moving target. It keeps changing so that the person who is um, doing this or, you know, kind of over the em employer, so to speak, or the trafficker can continue to control that individual. Um, even if they've met that first benchmark, it continues to grow so that that person isn't building agency, they're not building capital, they don't have the connections. A lot of times people cut off um, family members, social support, those things. And in Illinois, we are actually a very large hub for both labor and sex trafficking because of our location to the interstate and how easy it is from different points in Illinois to cross state borders. Um, so there's a lot of those different pieces that oftentimes go below our radar because it doesn't feel like it's so present. And actually it is. So human trafficking is, is a big thing that is a public health concern that medical providers, um, people, you know, being aware of what things to be on the lookout for that might indicate human trafficking is, is really huge and getting that education and awareness out there. With Advocate Aurora, there's a whole human trafficking task force. And it's also thinking about things like community-based violence, systemic oppression that can cause intergenerational trauma. There's a lot of things that go beyond that more socially thought about PTSD presentation. When we think about combat veterans coming back and kind of leave it at that, there's actually a much wider range. Wow. The one more thing I want you to comment on is how prevalent it is. Like I saw a stat that talked about, you know, as a country, we're like one of the countries that has a lot of trafficking. Comment a little bit about how prevalent it is as a country. 
I wish that I had very specific numbers. It changes a little bit with where you look for data. It is so incredibly prevalent. It is such a big thing, especially with our immigration um, policies and with people coming into the country or being brought into the country under the guise of you are coming in and I'm going to set you up with this job. No worries. Everything's good. And then, you know, somebody comes and turns out that person has all your papers. They have all of your identification. You're not allowed contact. You're working you know, 10 to 12 hours a day in poor living conditions. So a lot of it is use of bringing people in for labor or for sex work where it's misrepresented. So people come in willingly into a situation that is actually something that is totally misrepresented and abusive to them. But then we think about, oh, but they're coming in willingly. We're giving them the opportunity to come here to have this this job, this whatever. So it can go under our radar that way as well. So it is incredibly, incredibly prevalent in the United States. And again, the Chicagoland and Illinois area. That, that's very helpful, Doc. I really appreciate it. You really provided some insights because now I kind of understand that, yeah, this is the land of opportunity, the land of dream, and you can kind of use that as a way to hook people to come to this country. So that makes a lot of sense. And I, I did read um, uh, recently that United States, Mexico, Philippines, those are three countries where there's a high prevalence. So mm-hmm. that is incredibly helpful. So thank you for your insights. And I really appreciate you. So now guys, human trafficking is something you may have not thought about, but now the doc has given us some awareness and I really appreciate her bringing awareness to this topic. So if you enjoyed uh, hearing from my expert today in this uh, field of trauma, make sure you check out podcast episode number 48, where myself and the doc dive even deeper into this Uh, subject. And just make sure to like and subscribe and even comment. If you've had some traumas that you've overcome, maybe you'll inspire somebody else with your words. So, So thank you for checking out this video. And until we meet again, be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest. Thank you so much, Doc.